Yes, steak does in fact scare the crap out of one whole heaping hell of a lot of people. But in reality, steak is about as complicated as pouring a beer into a pilsner. Well, you gotta know, there's a few simple rules and there's absolutely no reason why you can't cook up a killer steak for your big night. All right, let's start off these super easy, simple steaks. These are two petite steaks. You also might know them as bottom sirloin steaks. Um, pretty inexpensive cut of meat, but that doesn't mean they can't be made delicious. Start by adding a good amount of salt and pepper on this. And I do mean a good amount, but don't worry. You're going to lose about 30% of it when you put it in the pan. This is absolutely the simplest thing in the world to do. It should be salt and pepper. That should be the only seasoning, regardless of what steak you're working with. Okay, in a black iron or cast iron pan, you wanna get a decent amount of peanut oil, about two to three tablespoons. If you're in the UK, peanut oil is also known as ground nut oil, so, but yeah, it's peanut oil. Uh, the reason you wanna use peanut oil is the high heat and you wanna have this on a fairly generous heat. If you use olive oil or something like that, um, you, uh, it tends to smoke and become disgusting. Olive oil has a pretty low smoke point, so I wouldn't use that for steak. If you are allergic to peanut oil, another great alternative is grapeseed oil. It has the same high heat and everything, so. Yeah, either peanut oil or grapeseed oil. Then just lay them down like so, and you want to hear this sound. Hear that lovely sizzle? Yeah, I know, the uh, audio sucks. Okay, then you want to salt and pepper the other side as well. You don't got to worry too much about over seasoning it because like I said, you're going to lose a bunch of it when you flip it around in the pan. Man, vegans, you have no idea what you're missing. I seriously do not know how anyone on this planet can be vegetarian or vegan as long as steak is available. That being said, okay, how do you know when your steak's done? Well. Your first flip should come two minutes after you set it in, a, in the pan. Then about a minute every so often, and it goes in stages of two, 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 two. So about four minutes should be rare. About six minutes should be medium rare. Eight for um, medium, and about 10 for well done. Or you can use uh, the hand method. Put your thumb and forefinger together, and push down, that's rare. Thumb and middle finger, push down on the fleshy part of your hand, that's medium rare to medium, and your thumb and ring finger is well done. Uh, the reason you wanna have this up on such a high heat is because you wanna get that wonderful sear on your steaks. Whether searing adds anything or keeps juices in or not is up for debate. I'm not going to debate it here. What it does do is it imparts an absolutely delicious, delicious crust in your steak. Me personally, I think it does keep juices in. I think it does add something. Whatever it is, everything's always better when you fucking sear it. So fucking crank that heat up and sear that steak. They should be looking a little bit like this after about two minutes. If anything's kind of curling up a little bit like you see on the end there, then feel free to press it down. Remember, these aren't burgers, so you're not gonna press anything out. So because I happen to like my steak rare, that's the way I think beef should be served, rare, Look, if you're one of these people that likes to macerate and kill 
your beef because you like to go to well done, fine, that's your prerogative. But me, I think beef should be served rare to medium rare is about as done as I go on meat. Anyway, right before you're ready to end it uh, in the pan, you want to take some butter and melt it in the pan. And you want to baste this over the steak. Just take a spoon, put it in the pan, and baste it over. This gives the steak a wonderful nut brown finish and really adds another depth of flavor. Then, once they're done with that, take them over and place both of them on a steak. Look at them. They look delicious already. Then, you want to take some of those meat drippings and all and butter and just drizzle and baste them over the steak. And then leave them to rest for just a few minutes. After that, it's time to dig into your delicious and perfectly cooked steaks. Really, really simple to do. You don't need to freak out and stress out every time you need to cook steak. It's that easy. And look, that is a perfect, cheaper cut of steak, cooked deliciously, and cooked pink. And that's it. That is how you cook up a killer petite steak in a pan. And everybody's got a range in which to cook on in their house. And this is not a primo cut of steak. This is a very inexpensive cut of steak. So everyone can afford this. You don't have to fucking go into debt to throw a steak dinner for everyone. You can get by with a cheap steak provided you cook it properly. And if you follow these few simple rules, I know that you'll be able to pull this off. So the next time you want to impress people with your cooking skills, be they your parents, your siblings, boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, whatever. Or hell, just cook a nice meal for yourself to have a nice ice cold beer with. Try this one on.